Welcome to the video. Today we're going to be exploring an iceberg created by a Reddit user named Joey the Deception. It covers the many interesting and lesser known aspects of LEGO Batman the video game, which only gets stranger and more niche as we traverse down through the deepest depths of this iceberg. This is a game that I'm sure many of us of a certain age will definitely remember from our childhood. I certainly do. So without further ado, let's dive into the iceberg and find out if this truly is the darkest LEGO game produced to date. So the first item in this iceberg is referring to the fact that LEGO Batman the video game is primarily set in a version of Tim Burton's Batman universe. And since Joel Schumacher took over this series from 1995's Batman Forever, Schumacher's influence is also felt in the game. This is all despite the fact that Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins was only released three years prior to this game's release and The Dark Knight was due to be released the very same year in 2008. Much of the game's design cues and overarching storylines are directly lifted from the Burton and Schumacher series of films. Burton's influence being more evident by the overuse of the gothic architecture, the character models featured and the music used. However, the Arkham Asylum design took more cues from Schumacher's depiction. Each of the game's playable characters are actually separately based on both Burton movies and Schumacher's Batman Forever. Chapter 1 in the game is based on Batman Forever, with two levels based on the final films in the series Batman and Robin. Chapter 2 is based on Batman Returns, and Chapter 3 is based on Batman, the 1989 movie. There are actually many references to various other pieces of Batman media throughout the game, notable inclusions the reference to the 1966 Batman the movie, with the Penguin submarine from that film being featured in the game as a playable vehicle. The Wayne Enterprises building is also directly based on Nolan's Batman Begins. Suit Upgrades So Suit Upgrades is referring to a core part of the game's gameplay. For the heroes in the game, there are unlockable suits which give the hero characters special abilities which are needed to progress through some of the puzzles throughout the levels. Red bricks hidden around the map are needed to unlock these suit upgrades and about half of the red bricks that you are able to collect throughout the game are just needed just to unlock all of the available suits for the heroes which are needed for the levels. Hush. Hush is one of the last characters in the game that you unlock but despite this, his only special ability is that he's able to build faster, which is something you would have unlocked a long time before gaining access to the character Hush. Lack of Gold Bricks For the first time in the main series of LEGO games, LEGO Batman did not actually feature any collectible gold bricks as part of the gameplay. This is a feature that had been seen in every previous game, and in fact every main series LEGO game since, so it's a bit bizarre as to why they didn't include them. Robin is Tim Drake. So anyone familiar with Batman lore will know that there have been multiple inversion characters who take on the role of Robin. Based on a combination of Robin's character model design in the game and an extract from the console's instruction manual, as well as the DS version of the game having a Tim Drake character, it is reasonable to assume that Robin in this game is Tim Drake. Raz Al Ghul Ra's al Ghul is one of the most iconic Batman villains. In LEGO Batman the video game, Ra's al Ghul is the final character that is unlocked. The player must complete all other challenges and unlockables in order to obtain him. The character's only special ability is that he is able to walk across zip lines quicker than other characters. Batman the Animated Series Designs this entry of the iceberg is fairly simple. It's referring to how the designs for characters such as Clayface, Poison Ivy, Two-Face, Hardy Quinn, Scarecrow, and to a lesser extent Mr. Freeze are based off of their counterparts presented in Batman the Animated Series. Killing Joke Reference The Killing Joke is probably the most famous modern Batman comic. Even those who have never read a Batman comic have likely heard of The Killing Joke. It's famous for both its dark and gritty nature, but also, for at least some time, being one of the few pieces of mainstream Batman media to explore the origins of the Joker in any serious and significant detail. In the game there is a tropical Joker character model. The overall design and expression on the character model's faces seem to be a direct reference to when he crippled and assaulted Commissioner Gordon's daughter, Barbara, in The Killing Joke. Prize and inclusion, given the target audience of LEGO and its games are for a family audience. DS exclusive characters The DS version of the game features a lot of different and unique character models which aren't available on any other platform. Unique skins include the classic versions of Batman and Robin, Monster Killer Moth and Riddler in a suit. You can also walk around as unmasked heroes and villains such as Tim Drake, Selina Kyle and Jonathan Crane. Lastly, there are also exclusive villains in this version, such as Hugo Strange, The Ventriloquist, Firefly, and Talia Al Ghul. Playable versions include Azrael, Black Mask, Spoiler, and Huntress. DS Differences 
So this one's actually my own custom addition to the iceberg and I was a little surprised it wasn't featured on any of the tiers. Quite simply, due to both the hardware limitations of the Nintendo DS and its unique feature compared to other platforms at the time, the game on the DS is rather different to its console counter counterparts. Things such as story mission differences, entirely different level gameplay, different Batcave and Arkham Asylum hub designs, closer camera perspective and more are seen in this version of the game. Some of its limitations of this version only help to add to the creepiness of the feel of the game. Reuse models in LEGO Batman 2 so this one's quite self-explanatory, some of the assets used in this game were reused in the sequel, Lego Batman 2 DC Super Heroes. For example, the models of Mr. Freeze, Killer Crocs, Man Bat, Penguin and Harley Quinn. Chalk Outline Chalk Outline is referring to the first level in the villain storyline. In the mission, the Riddler makes a withdrawal. There is a chalk outline on the floor in the parking lot under the bank, indicating the presence of a dead Lego minifigure. There's no context as to why this is here, other than to add to the eerie, creepy and mysterious atmosphere of the world in this universe. Broken Extra Toggle the extra toggle in LEGO video games forms part of the extra options list that appears in some of the earlier LEGO series games. It allowed you to use even more characters in a level during free play that you wouldn't normally be allowed to use. In LEGO Batman, for whatever reason, be it a bug or rush development, the extra toggle doesn't work aside for one secret character model, which is the police marksman. Several other secret characters have since been uncovered by modders and people interested in the game, which we assume would have been intended to form part of this extra toggle had it been properly implemented. They include the Riot Police Officer, Red Freeze Girl, Orange Security Guard, several construction worker models and more. There are quite a few videos on YouTube which cycle through all of the known secret characters. Team Penguin Ref this item is referring to an alleged reference in the game to a cartoon called The Batman. In one episode of this cartoon show titled Team Penguin, the Penguin recruits a number of villains, these being Killer Croc, Ragdoll, Killer Moss, Firefly and Bane. In the game, the Penguin similarly recruits a group of bandits, including both Killer Croc and Bane, so it's theorised that this is a reference to that cartoon. Facts for the first time in a LEGO game, you're able to purchase facts, which is basically information about characters and the city from the in-game store. They created a much more developed lore for the in-game universe. There are also character profiles and facts displayed on the loading screens in between missions. It is possible that these facts are part of the wider Batman canon, but nothing's ever specified, so we're not sure. Store exclusive villains in this game, as with most LEGO series games, there is an in-game store where you can purchase character models and other unlockables. This entry is referring to the fact that there are some store-exclusive character villain models, including Man Bat and the Mad Hatter. Classical Catwoman and Tropical Joker are only available through the store, and lastly Hush and Ra's al Ghul both have to be purchased through the store when unlocked. Military Policeman the military policeman figure doesn't actually appear in any level or anywhere in the game. It was made up from leftover assets from previous LEGO entries, LEGO Star Wars and Indiana Jones, so we're not really sure why this is available in the game. Billboards In the game there are many billboards which depict characters from the story and other in-game references. Custom only characters the in-game custom character builder is the only way you can play as some characters such as Huntress, Azrael, Black Mask and Spoiler. This requires 100% completion of the game before you're able to build up these characters properly. Early models in trailers. The early trailers of the game depict variations on some of the character models we see in the final game. This is almost certainly due to the fact that the trailers were published when development was still ongoing. Examples include a different character model for some police officers, which weren't ever seen in the final game. Batman in Arkham Asylum There's a glitch where you're able to get Batman and Robin into the Arkham Asylum hub, which can be achieved by completing the Arkham Asylum bonus mission. Alternatively, you can get the villains into the Batcave by switching between the two hubs very quickly. The Yeti. 
For an unknown reason, there is a Yeti character you can purchase from the in-game store after you complete the final story mission. However, there appears to be no references, links or tie-ins to this character in any other part of the game, so we're not really sure why it's been included. It has no special abilities other than its gun and doesn't appear to be in any cutscenes. There is speculation that the Yeti was supposed to be part of Mr. Freeze's storyline that ended up on the cutting room floor, perhaps a goon or henchman model. Set in early 1990s. Judging by the general appearance of the setting, technology available, char character design and vehicles, it's possible that the game takes place in the late 80s to early 90s. Personally I think the timeline is in a completely separate... Personally I think that the timeline is completely mythical and separate from our universe, as is usually the case with many pieces of Batman media, such as the Burton films or the Gotham TV show, where there is a mismatch of technology, aesthetic and architecture which makes it hard to pinpoint an exact era, an analogue to our timeline. Police Marksman the police marksman character has different designs depending on which level you play. This is also the only character that is affected by the buggy extra toggle. Lego Batman 2 is a reboot. Lego Batman 2 pretty much has zero reference to this game and appears to be a hard reset of the franchise. Killer Moth wing size change. In every LEGO Batman game since the original, the wings on the Killer Moth character have gotten smaller and smaller. The only exception is the redesign in the latest LEGO DC Super Villains game. It takes place after No Man's Land. So No Man's Land is a dark, gritty and well-known and much-loved Batman comic series in which Gotham City is declared no longer a part of the United States following a cataclysmic earthquake, leaving the city in rack and ruin. The arc has become so popular that much of the more recent Batman media has taken direct inspiration from the story arc. For example, the second act of Nolan's The Dark Knight Rises and the fourth and fifth series of the television show Gotham. This entry of the iceberg is exploring the theory that the in-game universe may take place after the events of No Man's Land, as the game appears to be set in the 90s and would explain the disappearance of many of the villains not included in the game. Glass breaks textures. One of the more prominent bugs in this game is a situation where the glass texture causes the faces of Mr. Freeze, Joker and the Penguin to glitch out. This bug is most notable in the level and icy reception. Boundary break. Another major bug is the possibility to leave the world boundary and explore levels freely. In the level The Lure of the Night, there's a great example of this. Killable Alfred. In the hub for the heroes, the Batcave, Alfred is the only character you can kill in one or two punches, either by knocking him into a wall or off of the balcony. Unused levels. This entry is referring to the unused levels in the game, most notably the fairgrounds entrance, which when modders dug into the game discovered that this level can actually be loaded into LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga, as it fits the same data and file, requi and file requirements of that game. Unused levels. There was an older Harley Quinn model that was half cut from the game. The original model can still be seen in a few places throughout the game, mostly in billboards. Ice Rockets. This is a glitch in the game where if you shock a frozen character with the Joker's buzzer then it will cause that character to fly up into the sky. iOS versions. There were two iOS versions of Lego Batman the video game released. One was originally developed by Glue and was the side-scrolling beat-em-up where you only play as Batman. The other was a collection of original mini-games based on the villains in this game. Hookers in the Dark of the Night. The mission in the Dark of the Night features a very seedy dance club. Given the decrepit and rundown nature of Gotham City in this universe, it could be theorised that these dancers are doing more than dancing to make ends meet. Absence of dead shots. Despite the fact that many of the main constituents of Batman's Rogue Gallery make an appearance in this game, there is no reference to Deadshot. His first appearance in the series is in the 3DS version of LEGO Batman 2, and he appears in every subsequent entry in this series. Nicholas Tolp 
Nicholas Tolp was a Dutch surgeon and famous for being the subject of a famous oil painting by Rembrandt called The Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Nicholas Tolp, which depicts Tolp giving an explanation of the musculature of an arm to a group of doctors. This slightly graphic painting is featured in the mission The Joker's Masterpiece in the game, which is set in an art gallery. It's rather surprising that this painting would be included in such a child-friendly game. Joker Joke Upon completing the final mission in the Joker's Hero storyline to the top of the tower, the final scene ends with a close-up of the Joker in his cell. He pulls out a gun and points it to the side of his head. When he pulls the trigger, it is revealed to be his joke gun and he laughs maniacally into the camera. This is a surprising inclusion. Even despite the fact that it was a fake gun, it's still pretty odd and a dark inclusion to a game aimed at children. Star Wars in Xbox 360 version in the Xbox 360 version of the game, modders have uncovered many leftover files from Star Wars The Complete Saga, mainly some images from achievements and data for some character models. Little fun at the big top, negative aura. This level has a very eerie, odd and unsettling atmosphere. It's set in a rundown and decrepit carnival with other oddities such as a crashed bus and the police commissioner being trapped in a cage. This is juxtaposed with the very upbeat, uplifting and happy classical music playing in the background. It only helps to add to the very eerie nature of this in-game universe and reinforces the negative aura created throughout much of the game. Yeti is based on Snowman. So carrying on from an earlier entry, higher up in the iceberg, there's a theory that the Yeti character is actually based on a villain from Batman's rogue gallery called Snowman. Considering how lesser known foes appear in the game, it's suggested that Traveller's Tales started Yeti as a way to include Snowman into the game. Hidden Progress Counter This is referring to another leftover from Star Wars The Complete Saga. Apparently there's a hidden progress counter from the aforementioned game, which is hidden far off and out of bounds in the Batcave. It was probably an accidental leftover. Fortunately, I couldn't find any footage or pics for this one. Dark Knight tie-in. So due to the release of Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight and the fact that a previous tie-in game being developed by Pandemic at the time had been canned, Lego Batman the video game became the de facto tie-in game for The Dark Knight's release. And I'm sure many of its sales were driven by the marketing and media hype of the film being released at the time. Two-Face Chase, quiet music. This item's referring to unused audio for the Two-Face Chase mission. It was supposed to play when there was no action happening in the game. The piece is the exact same as the calm background music used in the back cave that has added ambient car noises and faint horn sounds. Here's a sample of how it sounded. Odd character roster. Lego Batman the video game has the smallest catalogue of character model of any mainline Traveller's Tales Lego game. As mentioned before, there are unlockable characters who never appeared before and whose reason for inclusion is unknown, such as the Yeti, Fishmonger, Military Policeman, and alternate costumes of Joker and Harley Quinn. Several villains that could have been included were also cut, however some of these for some reason did end up in the DS version of the game. LBI agents. One of the odder inclusions in the extra toggle was the inclusion of a character called LBI agent. Its purpose is unknown, as is its connection to the game or Batman lore. In fact, it's impossible to pinpoint any Batman or Lego character that this may have been trying to reference. Perhaps this was just a way of trying to expand the Lego universe's lore with some form of FBI analog for the Lego universe. Arkham Asylum prequel. Batman Arkham Asylum is another famous Batman video game. It was released just a year after Lego Batman the video game was aimed at a much more mature audience. However, there are quite a few coincidences which has created the theory that the Arkham Asylum game is actually a continuation of the story from Lego Batman. For example, every single villain who is sent to Arkham in the Lego game also makes an appearance in the Arkham game. Furthermore, every significant character who appeared in Lego Batman gets a mention in Arkham Asylum. Traveller's Tale rushed the game. It's inferred that Traveller's Tales, the game's developer, rushed the development and release of this game. 
which helps explain much of the mystery behind many of the items in the above tiers. Judging by the tight release schedule that they had during this period leading up to and after LEGO Batman, it would be reasonable to assume that resources were stretched and parts of the game were overlooked, cut or left unpolished due to this fact. Furthermore, the company may have been trying to capitalise on the release of Nolan's The Dark Knight and wanted the game to be ready for this. Gotham is a nuclear fallout. Another theory by the creator of this iceberg to explain why Gotham in this universe is in such a decrepit, creepy and eerie state is that it could be due to the fact that Gotham suffered from some form of nuclear event and is now suffering the consequences of the fallout. It may explain the backstory of how villains such as Clayface and Killer Croc exist in this world. Killer Moth in Trophy Room Probably the strangest glitch in the game is the fact that you're able to cause an unkillable version of the killer moth to appear in the hero's trophy room in Wayne Manor. Is it possible that he died after the events of the main story and now haunts Wayne Manor? Lego Batman is the darkest Lego game. Dude, Batman is the darkest Lego game. If we think back to every previous entry we, we've gone through in this iceberg, we can kind of see the justification for why LEGO Batman the video game might well be considered the darkest entry in the LEGO series to date, from the chalk outline of a dead body and the presence of bodies of dead police officers, to the Joker's edgy joke about unaliving himself, it only adds to the game's overly eerie, creepy and unsettling nature which creates a very strange undercurrent which never lets up at any point in the game. This is very unique to this specific entry of the LEGO series of games. None of Traveller's Tales other LEGO series games before or since have ever matched the negative aura created in this game. The atmosphere is entirely fitting for a Batman entry which has seen many dark and grim depictions in other media. So that concludes the iceberg. I hope you all enjoyed watching the video as much as I did making it. And once again a big thanks to Joe the Deception for creating the original iceberg which, along with other further reading material, can be found and linked in the description. If you like this video and want to see more, then please do subscribe, like the video, leave a comment with any feedback. I have many more videos planned, not just iceberg videos, and I think you'll like them if you've enjoyed this video. So thanks once again, and have a great day. Bye-bye.